about 75% of smartphone users use their phone to listen to music too. And outside of that one guy on the bus blasting YouTube as loud as he can, most people just want a simple, unobtrusive way to enjoy their music with their phone. Bluetooth headphones, of course, represent a really big chunk of the market, and they've continued to improve. But if you want to have the best music quality on your phone, you're going to need wired headphones. And if you want to use wired headphones with most modern phones, you're going to need a dongle. Deck. What's going on everybody? This is Steve from Bloom Audio and today we're going to talk about some ultra portable DACs, uh, often referred to as dongles. There are a ton out there and we can't cover them all, but we've got nine today that covers a pretty good cross section of what's out there from $70 to close to $500. So we have the Dunu DTC 480, the Questyle M12i and M15i, the iBasso DC07 Pro, the Cayenne RU7, the Dita Navigator, the iFi GoBar and GoBar Kensei, and the iBasso DC Elite. So we're gonna give you a quick overview of you know, some key features, design elements, the sound, and offer some awards for these, the best budget, best bang for your buck, best for over-ear headphones, and the absolute best overall, at least in my opinion. Each of these devices has a few things in common. So the key thing here is that these are ultra portable devices that use your phone or tablet or other device for power without any internal battery of their own or ability to charge. Second thing is they're gonna connect to, in most cases, your phone using what's called an OTG cable. Uh, so it'll be USB-C on one end to connect to the device and then either USB-C or lightning on the other end. Now this can't just be any lightning to USB-C cable or USB-C to USB-C cable. If you're using it with a phone, it does need to be an OTG can cable, which essentially has an extra bit of electronics in there that allows your phone to connect to an external accessory. And in this case, all but one of these devices has both a 3.5 millimeter and a 4.4 millimeter output. With the balanced output, in almost every case, you get about twice as much power than you get from the 3.5 millimeter single-ended output. In the description, we've included a link to our main article about this. Uh, if you wanna just be able to visually compare some elements at a speed a little bit slower, then we're gonna go in this video you'll wanna hit that up. We've got a chart in the bottom there comparing some key features as well. First up is the Dunu DTC 480, comes in at $70. Uh, this is a really small, very basic device. Uh, has one of the lowest power draws and one of the lowest power outputs of any of the devices we're covering here. DTC 480 has its own volume control with buttons on the side of the device, but it doesn't bypass your phone volume. So you'll use both your phone and the device to control volume. Typically, I'd recommend just turning your phone up all the way and using the device to control volume. But for some people, it's easier to do it the other way around. DTC 480 includes USB-C, a lightning, OTG cables, and an adapter for USB-A if you wanna use it with a PC. The Questyle M12i comes in at $149, and the M15i comes in at $249. So these are updated versions of the original Questyle M12 and M15, with the key update being MFI certification from Apple. So again, these are really small devices. Uh, these both have a little glass panel on them so you can get a look at the inner working. Some of the indicator lights are actually inside that glass panel. Both these devices feature an automatic impedance matching, so it detects the impedance of whatever you've plugged into it. So if it has a higher impedance uh, you know, device, a pair of over-ear headphones versus sensitive IEMs, they make an automatic adjustment to the output there. M15i, again, it has the 3.5 and the 4.4, while the M12 only has the 3.5. And the M15 has a high gain mode as well to give you some extra power along with the 4.4 that's giving you extra power. So that's gonna be a better choice for something that's harder to drive. Both the M12i and the M15i 
give the volume control to your phone so you don't have any control on the device and you'll just use your phone's volume control as usual with those connected. Now, despite being MFI certified, they're looking forward and don't include a lightning cable, only a USB-C to C OTG cable with these. Uh, and the 15 includes a USB-A cable as well. The Ibasso DC-07 Pro comes in at $199. And this is one of two devices in our roundup that has a screen on it, has a monochrome OLED screen that's gonna give you your volume level, information about the track bit rate, and that sort of thing. There's also a configuration mode in there. You can change the DAC filter. You have a couple options there. Adjust the left and right balance, uh, which is a really cool feature that if you need it, uh, it's really helpful to just have it right there. Uh, along with things like the backlight display. And then it has its own independent volume wheel that will bypass your phone's volume control. The Cayenne RU7 also has a small screen on there uh, and the ability to edit some features as well as display information on the screen. So you can change the gain level, the DSD upsampling level, and the backlight level as well. For $289, you get the DAC, Nice little protective case, a USB-C and lightning cables with a USB-A adapter as well. And the RU7 is one of the most unique DACs on this list as it uses a one-bit DSD design. If you don't care about how DACs work or anything like that, feel free to skip ahead about a minute. So what's cool about the one-bit DAC is that most popular audiophile DACs are a multi-bit DAC. So when you look at the quality, you might see something like 24-bit, uh, 44 kilohertz. So 44 kilohertz basically means that you've got 44,000 samples per second in that. And 24 bit means that each of those samples is 24 bit. Uh, so, you know, a bit is basically, you know, zero or one for the digital file. With a typical multi bit DAC with a 44K file, you have, you know, one 44 thousandths of a second is 24 bits. You process that, then you move on to the next 44 thousandth of a second. And of course it does this all incredibly fast. So you just hear fluid music playing. With a one bit DAC, you actually take each bit one at a time rather than processing, you know, 24 or 16 or 32 all at once. And what this tends to improve is the timing. If you've dabbled in high-end DACs at all, you'll know that some come with an option to purchase an external clock that helps stabilize aspects of the clock, which we're not gonna get into. The one bit going bit by bit rather than taking the whole block at once improves the timing. So that's one of the reasons to go with this, but obviously uh, there's a little bit more of a processing load with the digital filters that have to be used to combine those individual bits into the you know 24 bit block for each section. Dita may not be as well known for DACs or electronics as some of the other brands here, but the Navigator is an excellent portable DAC at 299. It's a bit bulkier than some of the other DACs on this list, uh, but it transforms into a phone stand, which is pretty cool. Uh, like most of the others, it bypasses your phone's volume and has two buttons on there for volume up and down. The included USB-C cable with a navigator is a little longer and nicer than some of the other ones out there. Next up is the iFi GoBar Brothers. The original GoBar was priced at 329 and the new and improved GoBar Kensei is priced at 449 both of these come with a pretty nice package, a USB-C lightning cable, USB-A adapter, and a case. And they have a pretty cool feature set with a built-in IE match, an X-Base and X-Space toggles. X-Base gives you a bass boost. X-Space is supposed to improve the sense of, you know, spaciousness, imaging, sound stage uh, that you're getting from your headphones. The basic specs look the same, but Kensei essentially has just a lot of upgraded components, particularly an upgraded power section that really makes the device sound significantly better than the original GoBar. And finally, we have the DC Elite from Ibasso. That one comes in at 449. And DC Elite is basically Ibasso taking their limited edition flagship DX320 Max player 
and trying to get as much of those components as they could into a very portable design. Uh, it's a little bulky, uh, but it has some cool stuff like a fully analog stepped volume attenuator, uh, you know, the ROM DAC and some choices that let them get a, a little bit more power and I think a little bit more refinement out of this than most of the other items on the list. That's a lot to process. And as I mentioned, we've got a link to our review where you can get some of this visually and do a cleaner comparison on the features and that sort of thing. Uh, but let's take a minute and talk about the sound. So with different DAC chipsets, different DAC designs, different sorts of amplification, all of these sound a little bit different. Uh, some of the differences are subtle, others more noticeable, but they mostly break down in two ways. One is the tuning of the device and the technical performance kind of coming together for how does it present detail, the space, the imaging, and all of that. And the other is how do they perform with IEMs versus over ear headphones. In terms of the tuning, kind of starting with the warmest here are the iFi GoBar and GoBar Kensei. Both of these do have just a noticeably elevated sort of low mid, mid bass character to them. You can push the X bass button and expand that even more with a pretty strong low bass boost into the sub bass and below. Kensei keeps it a little bit cleaner and nicer where I find that the original Go Bar, especially if you turn on Go Bass, starts to feel a little mushy in the dynamics. Uh, and can feel a little more congested. The Kensei cleans that all up. It gives you that little bit of warmth, but it feels more maybe to be where it's a natural warmth and it still feels very articulate along with that. The Dunu DTC 480 is also pretty warm. That just feels a little bit extra punchy in the mid bass, uh, just kind of that classic sort of slightly elevated bass gives you a little bit more energy in the songs. It's gonna be great if you listen to a lot of, you know, pop, electronic, hip hop, and all of that. Kyan RU7 seems to have a little bit of a slight V or U to the sound, where I do sense some warmth uh, going into the low mids and the bass, but it also has a really great, you know, high end, Chris, a little bit of sparkle to it there. So I kind of just sense a slight V or maybe a slight U shape to the sound with the RU7. Dita Navigator, which is kind of next up here, hits as highly natural, uh, but has a little bit of extra oomph to the sound. The dynamics, you know, the note weight and the body just feel a little bit extra strong on Dita Navigator. So the most neutral is probably the Ibasso DC Elite. Uh, that just seems like a really incredible straight linear extension in a reference sound uh, that to my ear doesn't, and you know, with the selection of headphones and IEMs we tried with it, doesn't really elevate anything anywhere. Just gives you the straight sound. Quest style are maybe just a little bit more warm than neutral. I uh, just slightly romantic. Uh, Definitely not noticeably warm, uh, maybe just the slightest bit rounded in the highs. The DC07 Pro, also from Ibasso, hits as the brightest. Uh, it seems to be just a little bit bright of neutral. Uh, the highs just feel a little extra crispy, uh, where the mids and bass feel largely linear. In terms of the sound stage and imaging, Go Bars, particularly the Kensei, the DC Elite, and the Navigator, were the standouts here, both in you know the weight and in the real sense of holographic imaging that they can provide. DC07 Pro and the Cayenne RU7 also had a pretty good width to the stage. Uh, the image feels a little bit more diffuse to that with those. It doesn't feel as weighty as uh, the Go Bar, the Navigator, the Elite. Now the Quest style has really solid imaging in both. Uh, there is that sense of holographic imaging in the M15i and the M12i, but the stage is a little bit more narrow. The Dunu D DTC 480 just isn't in the same class here. It's a fraction of the price of the other ones, 
Uh, you know, it sounds good, but it's not gonna give you really noticeable strength in the imaging, presentation of the soundstage or any of that. And it can get a little bit more congested sounding than the others. For over-ear headphones, uh, pretty much the same crowd that had really big sound stages also performs well here. Uh, you know, the Gobar, Gobar Kensei, DC Elite, and the Navigator all struck me as just being a step above with over-ear headphones. The Navigator in particular, being a little cheaper than some of those other options, I thought had really strong uh, dynamics, even with some harder to drive headphones. So if you're, you know, if you're looking for a portable option to listen to like a Hi-Fi Man Aria, Meze Empyrean, Sennheiser, maybe like some of ZMF's headphones. Any of these would be a good pick for that class of headphones. Don't expect to drive a, you know, Susvara, Modhouse Tungsten or anything like that well off these portable options. Now, if you're looking for something specifically for IEMs, the full range is generally gonna work pretty well here. The low gain modes that are available on you know, the Cayenne, the DC-07, and the Questyle M15i are helpful. And the DTC-480 is pretty much always on low gain. Uh, so those might be the best option for very sensitive IEMs. Otherwise, you've got a pretty broad choice. Now, I would offer some caution on the iFi Gobar, Kensei, and the DC Elite. Gobar and the Kensei, you'll need to have the IE match on. Still sounds great with the IE match on, uh, but there's some noise without it. Again, IE match just always gets me as a little bit different than just a high low gain. And the DC Elite, IEM sound great with it. Uh, you do get a little bit more from that stepped attenuator, a little bit more of a audible click. And you might just not have the range you need because you've only got 24 steps versus like 100 steps. Just might not have enough to fine tune the volume with a more sensitive IEM if you're only turning the volume up to five. There is definitely some nuance and difference here that if you're shopping, uh, you know, picking the right one is gonna be important based on your use and what features are most important to you. And to help you make that final decision, of course, as I mentioned at the start, we have some awards. So we've got the award for best budget, best bang for your buck, best for over ear headphones, and the best overall, my favorite pick. For budget, uh, under $100, that Dunu DTC-80 uh, kicks all kinds of butt with a 4.4 millimeter uh, and just generally solid sound. But if you catch it on sale, you might find that M12i for like $99, in which case, if you don't need the 4.4 balance, that gives you a lot more performance than the DTC-480 does. So if you can catch it on sale, I'm gonna say the M12i would be the best budget ultra portable deck. For the best overall, you know, bang for your buck, price for performance, we go with Adida Navigator. Its capability with over ear headphones, uh, the dynamics and the weight it provides makes it a real standout. Uh, where the M15i, which I think the M15 was probably my pick a couple years ago when that came out, uh, still really solid. The Navigator to me just elevates things a little bit, especially if you've got some over-ear headphones you wanna use with it. If your primary usage is over-ears, it's gotta be the DC Elite. This just really, the difference in the slam and dynamics with those slightly harder to drive headphones. DC Elite was one step above everybody else in the presentation of the whole thing, headroom soundstage uh, with over-ear headphones. And finally, the not really the absolute best, really just my personal favorite is the iFi Gobar Kensei. I love the features. Uh, I love the X bass. Um, you may know that I'm a little bit of a bass head, but just you know the design, the form factor, the presentation in the box, the whole thing. It's a really cool device and the improvements over the original made it a real winner for me. So let us know, what did we get wrong? What did we miss out on? Uh, what did we get right? Hit us up in the comments and of course, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll be back soon with more high fidelity audio content.